Assalamu alaikum. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about algae and fungi. Algae and fungi are one of the are two of the most important parts of the ecosystems of the world. Both are very abundant living organisms present on planet Earth and makes a very important part of biosphere. We will talk about algae and fungi one by one. First of all, we talk about algae. Algae, single is alga, singular alga and plural algae. These are the living organisms which are one of the most important group of producers on earth because these organisms are photosynthetic. They convert inorganic carbon to organic carbon using sunlight as the energy source. Algae are the organisms which ranges in size from unicellular microscopic to very large seaweeds which ranges uh, up to about 100 meters in length in their height. So there is a wide variety of uh, the group, group of organisms, the living organisms called algae present on the planet Earth. Algae are the most important producers of the biosphere. Producers mean that they are autotrophic and they produce their own food utilizing the sunlight as energy source and the carbon dioxide that is, that is inorganic carbon as the carbon source and produces the chemical form of energy ATP for themselves and carbohydrates for themselves as food and for other organisms as well. Algae provide food for various organisms in the food webs and the food chains in all the ecosystems, particularly the water ecosystems. In lakes, in oceans, in ponds, algae makes the most important part of the producers because all the other organisms which are consumers include the animal like protists, uh, the small animals, herbivore, fish, they all depend for their food on algae. They are dependent upon algae for their organic food source because these are the heterotroph. They have to um, take their energy in the form of organic carbon molecules from some uh, producers. Algae utilizes carbon dioxide and they are the most important producers of the oxygen because we know they are photosynthetic they utilizes carbon dioxide and they produces oxygen so they are the most important contributors of oxygen to the environment planet earth and we know that oxygen is necessary for uh, the uh, living beings for human beings for animals because they use oxygen in their respiration and without oxygen there is no life which could survive. Secondly, they utilize carbon dioxide. We know that carbon dioxide is one of the most important gases which causes the greenhouse effect. That is increase in the temperature of the uh, earth. Um, and because these organisms utilize carbon dioxide, they actually reduces the greenhouse effect. Algae. Algae are the source of various foods and other materials for other living beings including the human beings. For example, algae uh, from algae we produce many cosmetics from many algal products. Um, certain ice creams are also produced. From algae gelatin like materials are obtained. So algae are utilized in uh, so many things and uh, on top of the list um, we can make certain fuels, ethanol, from algae because we know that the world is facing fuel shortage and this shortage is going to increase in coming years. So algae are very important source of biofuels. Biofuels means that the fuels which are obtained from living organisms. Algae thrived on earth from, from the last 1.5 billion years and they are widely spread it all over the planet earth. 
now we talk about the distinguishing characteristics of algae. Number one, they are photosynthetic. Algae carry out photosynthesis, utilizes sunlight as energy source, convert inorganic carbon into organic carbon as the food source, uh, and it means that they uh, are the autotrophic organisms. They are producers, we call them autotroph, auto self, troph food. This they feed themselves, they produce their own food. Secondly, algae are eukaryotic organisms. They have a true nucleus. We know that organisms are of two kinds. They consist of two kinds of cells, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. The prokaryotic who do not have a true nucleus, that is their nucleus is actually not surrounded by a nuclear membrane. And the eukaryotic who have a true nucleus, that is their nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. Algae are eukaryotic. They are eukaryotic organisms. Sizes of algae. Their size ranges from microscopic unicellular algae, very, very large sea weeds, who, uh, the length of which or we can say the height of which reaches up to 100 meters. Algae, how can we classify algae? We can classify algae based upon their energy storage products, based upon their cell wall structure, based upon their pigments that they produce. So we can classify algae in various ways. Importantly, algae have a cell wall. We know that animal cells do not have a cell wall. Prokaryotic cells do have a cell wall. Plant cells also do have a cell wall. Algae also have cell wall and their cell wall matches more in its structure with the plants. Its cell wall consists of mainly uh, the material called cellulose. This is the same material with which the cell walls of the plants are produced. Now we have a look that how can we classify algae into various groups commonly. Algae, they are classified broadly many times or most of the times based upon the pigments that they produce. Algae produces different types of pigments due to which they appear in different beautiful colors. We know some major ones, the green algae, the red algae, the brown algae, golden brown algae and the euglenoids. Algae also have certain important characteristics. They reproduce both by asexual and sexual means. By asexual means, they normally reproduce by the help of uh, the process called mitosis because we know they are eukaryotic organisms and when eukaryotic organisms divide, they divide by the process of mitosis which is actually division of their nucleus. So asexually, uh, they reproduce by mitosis. Sexual reproduction in algae though takes place, but it takes place only during the environmental stress. Normally, they reproduce, that is, they uh, uh, produce their young ones with the help of mitosis, that is cell division, simple cell division. But whenever there is an environmental stress, uh, they need to um, make uh, spores for, uh, to, for some time to tolerate that uh, harsh environment or uh, which is uh, we can say intolerable environment for some time, they produce two types of gametes which are uh, named as plus gametes and minus gametes. These gametes fuse to form the zygospore. Zygospore remains there in this form which is actually more protected from the environmental conditions until better conditions come. When the um, environmental conditions they become favorable, then meiosis occur in the zygospore and it give rise to again uh, the haploid that is n number of chromosomes um, in the, uh, the zygospore's uh, products that is the cells and each cell then give rise to a unicellular algae or a uh, multicellular um, colony. Let's have a look on a unicellular algae, the top one. And on the other side, you can observe 
colonial algae. The top one is called euglena, which is very common in most of the ponds, pond waters. And the other one is volvox. Uh, you can observe a large colony and daughter colonies present inside that uh, volvox uh, organism, uh, the, the larger colony, the parent colony, we can say. When these colonies grow, then they are they separate from the parent colony and make and give rise to a newer colony. So algae are unicellular, that is, they can stay as a single cell, and they can stay in colonies, in groups, or aggregates of organisms. Now we talk about different types of algae and their characteristics. We know that algae are widely uh, characterized or widely grouped or classified based upon the pigments that they produce. Algae produces green pigments, they produce red pigments, brown pigments, goldish brown pigments. We call them green algae if they produce the green pigments. Very common pigments, chlorophyll, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. These are the same pigments which are produced by the plants. Algae also have the same pigments, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. So some scientists assume that the land plants which have the same pigments as algae, they may have arisen from these green algae which also have same type of cell wall as the higher plants do have, the green plants do have, the land plants and uh, they also have both types of uh, chlorophylls that is chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B and both the algae and the land plants, they also carry out photosynthesis, they are producers, uh, they are autotrophic organisms, that is they make their own food. Um, so there are many characteristics match. Green algae are amongst the uh, most widely distributed algae on earth. There are about 7000 species of green algae present on earth. We can see on various the surface of various ponds and surface of various lakes, very large huge scums that is a layer on the surface um, covered by the covering the uh, top of top layer of the water uh, which is green in color that is actually the green algae and it provides food for all the food webs and food chains in uh, the water body maybe lake maybe pond maybe sea or an ocean. Green algae are the source of different types of products. Sometimes uh, a, a bigger mass of algae um, could be converted for, uh, for, for making or we can say uh, some products could be extracted out of uh, larger masses of green algae. Uh, some cosmetic products, some um, gelatin like materials which are used in certain uh, different types of foods. Green algae also uh, have very, very important role in reducing the greenhouse effect. Now we know that the greenhouse effect means that the temperature of the earth is rising due to presence of certain gases in the atmosphere. Now carbon dioxide is one of the uh, important gases which are involved in the uh, greenhouse effect. Algae can help a lot in reducing the greenhouse effect by reducing the carbon dioxide in the environment. It is said that about 2 tons of algae can utilize about 1 ton, one ton of um, uh, carbon dioxide and convert it into oxygen. So, um, and secondly, this large algal biomass have uh, another benefit. We can convert it into fuels by various methods we can convert it into alcohols, ethanol and we know that ethanol, the alcohols, they are uh, one of the most important forms of the biofuels. We can also convert this algal biomass into biodiesel. So green algae is one of the most important alga, um, group of algae which are widely distributed, which are present almost um, in, in every part of the world and they are very very useful as part of the ecosystem and uh, they can pro reduce the greenhouse effect, they can produce more oxygen, 
reduce carbon dioxide and uh, they could be used to uh, extract the biofuels. Now we talk about other kinds of algae. Red algae. Red algae are also a very uh, widely distributed form of algae. There are about 4000 species of red algae present in the world. They have specific type of pigment called phycobilin which give them a red color. This pigment is water soluble. Most of the other algal pigments, they are not water soluble and they could be uh, dissolved or, or uh, we can say mixed up only uh, with the organic solvents that is alcohol and acetone etc. But the red pigment, uh, phycobilins, they are soluble in water as water. This gives red color to these alga. Red algae are uh, uh, mainly present in um, oceans, in seas, that is the large huge water bodies and these alga are uh, used to produce uh, many cosmetic products. A lot many cosmetics products um, are uh, extracted from these uh, red algaes. Red algaes are also source of one more uh, very important material, uh, gelatin like material. We know that uh, when we have to solidify certain uh, foods like in the form of gels, jellies, we can say we have to make jellies, jelly like materials, we need uh, uh, some agent that help in making those gels, that is converting material into jelly like uh, materials. Initially, an animal based material, that is a material extracted from animals named gelatin, was used for doing this process. But we know gelatin have very high um, uh, fatty fat content and this is not good for health. And some people also do not like to use animal like animal based products. For those people, these gelatin like materials from red algae are used in making all the jerry like food materials and other related materials. Now we talk about the, the brown algae. Brown algae have about 1500 species. They include the very very large huge sea weeds and the other weeds. Their height, their length sometimes reaches about 100 meters. They are that long. They are also mostly present uh, in seas or uh, oceans. They are mainly marine. They have uh, uh, different kinds of pigments which give them a brownish color. These are very very important for uh, the scientific community because from these sea weeds particularly we extract a very important material called agar or sometimes called agar agar. This material is extremely important because this is used to culture the microorganisms. Whenever we need to culture microorganisms on a solid surface we provide them with certain nutrients but to convert those nutrients which are in a liquid form in a solid form that is making them converting them into a gel like form we need to use agar. Agar is a, a product of seaweeds it is extracted from seaweeds. So uh, and um, uh, before using agar all the other materials which were used to solidify the microbiological uh, uh, media in which that is media or we can say nutrient media in which we can culture microorganisms like bacteria um, and the and some other microorganisms. Uh, these materials were very costly like gelatin, sometimes starch. These materials were number one very costly and number two they were very difficult to use. Discovery of agar was the, one of the revolutionary uh, uh, say steps in the history of uh, microbiology. So microorganisms are normally cultured on a solid surface medium which is actually solidified with the help of material called agar which is uh, extracted from the seaweeds. Then we talk about the golden brown algae. Golden brown algae are comparatively uh, less widely distributed. They are present in uh, marine environments that is in oceans um, and these algae 
are used to uh, make some petroleum products. For, you, for making some petroleum products, uh, golden brown algae uh, can help us. Then comes the euglenoids. We know commonly a very common microorganism of, uh, of a pound, euglena. If we uh, get a sample from um, pound water and observe it under the microscope, we usually find out certain um, small microorganisms which are moving very fast and have some green colored material inside them. These are the euglena. Euglenoids. Euglenoid, the euglenoid group have uh, many other uh, uh, microorganisms that is microscopic unicellular algae. Um, these have uh, sometimes animal-like properties and sometimes they have some plant-like properties. So euglenoids um, are uh, parts of pound ecosystems that is mostly the freshwater ecosystems or the lake ecosystems. Euglenoids are, are uh, the producers of freshwater ecosystems mostly. That is, they carry out photosynthesis and they provide a source of food for uh, the animal like um, uh, microorganisms of the pond or the lake. And uh, hence, they help in uh, the food chain, or we can say they make the start or beginning of the food chain in freshwaters.